Blessings to you. This is Father Don Farnan coming to you from the front of St. Charles Borromeo Church in Kansas City's Northland in the lovely village of Oakview. And this little four part series of our COVID retreats as our in-home uh, advancement in our, our faith, talking about marriage. And this is the second of four parts. I thought I'd offer just a little bit of history of the sacrament and how it found root in today's world. Uh, last week, I talked to you about the difference in marriage being defined as either a civil union or the sacrament of holy matrimony. And I'm just going to put a little more uh, meat on that because historically in our Judeo-Christian history, marriage was focused as a cultural event, not a religious event. And it really didn't become a religious event until a beginning uh, around the 4th and 5th century. St. Augustine was one of the first to promote it in that way. Uh, but even then, it, it didn't become a sacrament until uh, some argue the 12th century and some say not until the 16th century, if you can believe that, uh, so that the majority of the history of the Catholic uh, Church of 2,000 years, it's really just in that fourth quarter, that fourth quadrant, that it's even been listed as one of the seven sacraments. So it is the seventh one to come in. Now, in the early church, as it was developing uh, beyond the 5th century, as the magistrates were going forth into the various regions of the empire, they couldn't get everywhere uh, to be witnesses. And so they began to ask clergy, clergymen to come and to uh, help to be officials or to officiate. And when any time the church gets involved, then they might want to put a little more stipulations on it, put a little more standards on it. And so then it began to separate uh, from the 5th to the 12th century. And then in a structure in the 16th century, it was actually listed as one of the seven uh, sacraments. Anyway, I, I, I find that to be kind of interesting because today uh, a lot of brides and grooms don't quite understand why the Catholic Church asks for certain things, why we would want it to be in a church, which is a sacred place, as opposed to being out out here in nature uh, and in many dioceses or I should say in many conferences around the world marriage is allowed in the Catholic Church to be out in the beauty of nature I understand from some of my friends that go down to Mexico to have their weddings done that Mexico is one of those conferences in the United States there were dioceses in Colorado that when I was ordained did allow uh, the marriages to take place in the mountains and out in the beauty of creation but now it's become a little bit more focused. But we do put some stipulations on it, like certain songs. And I know sometimes the brides get upset because they don't quite understand that liturgists might say that you can't have the wedding march because it has pagan roots. Well, I'm not sure that uh, we, we, we need to hold that as the standard because uh, a lot of things get transformed in time, just as the meal did for Jesus in becoming the center of our Holy Eucharist. Or there was a bride that was in tears because uh, the wedding, uh, the, the place where she wanted to have her wedding didn't allow the song of the, the, uh, the thousand years that I will love you because it was associated with a movie uh, that they said it's a pagan movie. Oh my God, you can't do that. Well, I, I think that we try to do the best that we can and to incorporate these things. I, I will say this is kind of a, a, a nod, a, a priest friend of mine back in the 80s when he married two truckers that met on, on CBs. Uh, that they wanted to have the CB song in their wedding. And rather than saying, being the church of no and saying, no, you can't do that, uh, he found a way to incorporate it into the homily and into his words of saying, this is a beautiful way, just as Jesus would always find and, and the, the mystery of God's love. Nothing is impossible with God. He could bring a couple together through the CB song. And I, I, I think that that's a good way uh, to do that as well. So anyway, my, my point is that I just wanted to emphasize that this is the last of the sacraments to be listed. And uh, we ought to keep it as holy as we can, but at the same time to embrace the bride and groom. It's your day. And it is a time that the church wants to congratulate you and embrace you and encourage you. So I hope that if you want a church wedding, uh, that the Catholic Church will be able to accommodate you and help you in that. We'll talk again next week, and I'll talk a little bit more about the various aspects of the Christian Union. See you later.